want to build stunning user interfaces on a massive 5 inch touch screen using just the USB 32. Imagine controlling smart home devices or even making your own handheld gadget all on this powerful display. In this video, we are diving deep into the MA Touch ESP32 S3 parallel TFT with Touch, a feature packed development board that combines a vibrant 5 inch IPS screen with the speed and power of the ESP32 S3. If you have been thinking about building your next touchscreen project, this might be the perfect tool for you. We will start by exploring the complete specs of this board in simple terms, then I will show you which Arduino libraries you need and how to install them step by step. After that, we will jump into SquareLine Studio to design a basic user interface and finally, we'll bring it all to life using LBGL on the Arduino side. So let's begin with a closer look at the hardware and what makes this display such a powerful platform for your next embedded UI project. This is the MATH ESP32 S3 parallel TFT with touch. A powerful development board with a large 5 inch IPS display. It has a high resolution of 800 by 480 pixels and supports 5 point capacitive touch using the GT911 touch driver. At the heart of this board is the ESP32 S3 W Room 1 module with a built in PCB antenna, 16 MB flash, and 8 MB PS RAM. It supports both Wi Fi and Bluetooth 5.0, making it great for wireless projects. The display uses a 24 bit RGB interface for rich colors. For connectivity, it offers two USB Type C ports, one for USB to UART using the CP2104 chip, and one for native USB. It also includes a reset button, a boot button, and MAB interfaces for I2C and GPIO. You can add a micro SD card, and yes, it fully supports the Arduino platform. It runs on a 5 volt through USB C. It works perfectly within a voltage range of 4.0 to 5.25 volts. It's reliable even in extreme temperatures from minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 85 degrees Celsius. Now that we have covered the hardware, let's talk about the software setup because without the right versions, things might not work properly. Although Macafabes has tested this display with both Arduino IDE versions 1.8.19 and 2.3.4, but I'm using Arduino IDE version 2.3.4 in this video and everything works perfectly. For the ESP32 board package, make sure you install ESP32 version 2.0.11. This specific version is important for compatibility, especially with the display and touch libraries. Now, let's go with the libraries you will need. Arduino GFX library by Moon on Our Nation version 1.3.1. JPEG DEC by Larry Bank version 1.2.7 and for the touch interface you will need the TAMC GT911 library version 1.0.2 by TAMC. Once you have these installed, you are all set to start coding. But before we jump into code, let's create a basic UI using SquareLine Studio. I have already created a template folder for you and inside this folder, I have added all the required files to save you time. I've also included two extra folders, one where you can save SQLine Studio project files and another one where you can save the generated UI files. Now, the .h and .c files you can see along with the Arduino sketch, these are the UI files generated by SQLine Studio. I have already explained all of this in detail in my previous videos. In fact, I have a complete series on SQLine Studio and LVGL. So if this is your first time using them, I highly recommend watching those videos first. Anyway, let's go ahead and import this project into SQLine Studio. On the screen, you can see I have just written Electronic Clinic. As I always say, before you start any project, make sure to test it first. Once everything is working, then you can go ahead and design your own UI. So first, let's test this setup and once that's done, we will start modifying it. So let's go ahead and export the UI files. Next, go to the UI files folder, copy all the generated files and paste them into the same folder where your Arduino.ino file is located. Finally, you can go ahead and open the Arduino.ino file. You don't need to change anything in this code. All the required display and touch drivers are already included for you. Just connect your board, upload the code and you're good to go. To upload the code, go to the tools menu, then navigate to board, ESP32, 
and select ESP32 S3 Dev module. Again, go to the Tools menu and select the communication port. Again, go to the Tools menu and then go to Flash Size and select 16 MB, 128 MB. Then go to the Partition Scheme and select 16 MB Flash. Then go to the PS Frame and select OPI PS Frame. And then finally click on the Upload button. The code has been successfully uploaded. You can see how easily we have displayed the text on the screen. Once your display is working, the rest of the work becomes quite easy. Next, let's add a custom font and display images on multiple screens. And just a quick reminder, in my previous video on the ESP32 S3 AMOLED smartwatch UI, I have already explained how to create a custom font step by step. So if you haven't seen that yet, I highly recommend checking it out. As you can see, creating custom fonts is super easy and you can even build a photo album with it. These images you are seeing right now are stored directly on the SP32, which means you can't add too many due to limited space. If you want to make a full digital album, you will need to store your images on an SD card instead. Here are some sample images that I have saved on the SD card. Just download the code and upload it. That's it. Our digital photo album is ready. If you are interested in advanced UI design, do check out my previous videos. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in the next episode. And thanks for watching.